and welcome to the new series of Tim's Wild Kitchen. In this series, we'll be attempting to flight pink footed geese, or is that a pink foot goose? Whatever it is, we're gonna try. We're walking up cock pheasants and hen pheasants and doing our best back in the kitchen to turn them into a wild feast with a few tasty tipples to boot. Cheers. Welcome to another episode of Tim's Wild Kitchen up in the beautiful field sports heaven that is Scotland. I'm looking today at this cock pheasant. We've done some nice cold smoked cock pheasant breasts. We're going to come up with a nice little Chinesey style recipe for those in just a minute. But I wanted to talk a little bit about why I like walked up shooting so much. Um, I'm absolutely not against driven shooting. I enjoy that too. But it was a question that I get asked sometimes is why do you like to go out and sort of hunt your birds rather than have them driven towards you and I think it's difficult really to explain you know there's you're much more present I find when you're walked up shooting yes there's a lot more to worry about right because you've got to make sure you've got your cartridges with you you know you need to know where everybody is you've got to keep in line you've got to know if there's a stop you have to be aware of you know, where birds are likely to break out or whether you're allowed to shoot ground game, whether you're not, where someone's dog is, all the stuff that's going on. Has someone gone back to pick up a bird that curled back and been shot behind? If so, is there someone behind you with a dog? Is it safe to shoot behind? You know, all of that stuff. Is there a, is there a byway up ahead, you know, with a bridle path, the potential hazards of people up there? All that stuff has to be sort of assessed constantly and then thought about. But in that moment where it all comes together and a, a bird flushes or a rabbit box and you just have that picture in your head of where everyone is, you've got that quick second to reassess, make sure you're absolutely right, 100% safe, find a safe window for the shot, mount the gun, take the shot. All of that happens in a sort of heightened sense of kind of awareness and when that's going on I just, for me I love that. I also really like to get back at the end of a day of shooting and you know with tired legs and feel like I've earned what I've walked about for. So that, you know, that for me is one of the things I like. And I think it's important when we think about Scotland to think about that too, because we quite often imagine, or certainly I used to imagine Scotland very much as a place, although it was full of wilderness, of big high mountains and pheasant drives and, you know, the iconic red stag up on the top of a very high quarry. But actually, there's such a massive mixed habitat of wilderness up here. Incredible wildfowling, fantastic lowland walked up shooting. Um, you know, it's a paradise for field sports. Um, you can't do the same things with a cock pheasant as you would with a hen pheasant. This is why we've dealt with them differently in separate episodes of Tim's Wild Kitchen. So the hen pheasant can go over here out of the way and the cock bird must be admired, okay? I've got some breasts here that I've cured already and, and, and whatnot, but I've got a stunt pheasant here just to to bring it back out and show you again, because the size of the bird is bigger, they roam further, they fly a little bit harder, they make a lot more fuss, they run around and, and stamp their feet and whatnot. And I just think they're a much more, you know, gregarious bird, aren't they? They stand out, beautiful things. And then the cock birds always remind me much more of their Asian heritage than the hen birds with their fantastic jungle-like plumage. And that's one of the reasons that Although the breasts are a bit tougher, given this light smoking, we're gonna go a little Chinese style dish. We're gonna fry some of this with a little crispy batter. We're gonna stick it in a freshly steamed bao bun, make a little bit of homemade soy sin sauce, which is a sort of cheaty hoi sin, and you know, that's gonna be delicious. So here's my nice lightly cured cock pheasant breast. They've only been lightly cured, so they're just sort of cured on the outside. Then I've rinsed them off, patted them dry, uh, and they're ready to go. Now they're all sticky on the outside in the smoker. So what will happen is we'll be raw pheasant inside, slightly smoky on the outside. It's gonna lend itself really well to this little Chinesey style recipe. And they're gonna want just maybe 40 minutes in the cold smoker. 
just to touch them with smoke, give them that little layer on the outside. The absolute hardest part of this whole recipe is, well, there's two bits really. The first is taking the meat off the cockbird. So I've skinned that out, taken the breasts off. I've used the thighs for something else and put the legs aside for a bit of stock. But once you've done that, cured them, dried them off, hot and smoked them, you know, they're, they're sort of great. You could freeze those like that. They'd be fantastic for a hundred different recipes. The really skillful thing though with this recipe outside of the actual game preparation is making the little steamed bao buns. Now I'm reliably informed that you can buy packets of bao buns pre-steamed and just warm them up when you get home. But that seems like a bridge too far for the um, Tim's Wild Kitchen. So here I've fermented a, a, a light bread dough. So this is half plain flour, half strong bread flour. Um, it's about 250 grams of flour combined, a little pinch of salt, teaspoon of natural yeast, um, you know, uh, baker's yeast, and then about 170 grams of water. I've kneaded it to a dough. It's just doubling up in size now, so it's ready for the next step. And what you do with bao bun is you sort of, you steam them and they puff up, but to get them super puffed up, not only are they fermented, but but when we fold them up and turn them into little buns, we use um, we work a little bit of baking powder into them as well, so that that final fermentation happens incredibly quickly and you get that sort of added lift from the baking powder. Um, at that point, as soon as they're 100% puffed up, they have to go in the steamer, we'll steam them. While they're steaming, we'll get a bit of this pheasant meat, slice it up, dip it in some uh, corn flour here with a bit of egg white and fry those and the sauce, as I said, will come together while these are proving. So it sounds like a bit of a rush. It's not too much of a drama. Get yourself ready. You'll be able to do it easy. So as I said, for the bao, the next stage is to take them out. So that's baking powder. It's quite a lot of baking powder, but we have got 250 odd grams of dough here. So don't worry too much about that. I'm just gonna scrape that bread dough out of there, plonk it on to that little bit of loveliness there. I'm just gonna fold the dough together a little bit. I'm just working in a bit of that baking powder. Okay, and what you'll find is once the baking powder sort of inside the dough, the moisture of the dough will activate the baking powder and it will start to um, start to go like, you know, madness. So I'm gonna quickly shake that up, show you how to do that. I'm gonna use a tiny little bit of this um, corn flour here just to sit them on while they have their next stage of their prove. Um, and if you wanted to be you know, really accurate about it, obviously you could weigh each little piece of dough you cut off to make sure they're exactly the same. Personally, I think a variety is the spice of life and a few that aren't identical is actually quite a nice thing. So we'll make a few more or less the same size. So I'm gonna leave those to just prove for a minute. That's gonna happen pretty quickly because they've got that baking powder in them as well. Now, while that's happening, I'll give my hands a quick wash We'll throw together a little bit of the sauce for the garnish, and then we'll show you how to do the pheasant. This is really simple. I'm gonna start with some good quality soy sauce. I'm gonna pop that in the pan. I'm gonna add, you know, about half a teaspoon of good, um, this is a homemade seven spice, but you could get a, a nice five spice or make your own, that'd be fine as well. That's going in there. Um, less, than, less than a quarter the amount of soy, a little splash of Shaoxing cooking wine. You could use a dry sherry if you wanted to, and then, you know, you could also use normal ketchup, but I've got some homemade squash ketchup here. So I'm gonna use a couple of teaspoons of that. It's gonna add some sweetness and some body to the sauce. Then here, I've got some chopped, very finely chopped spring onion, ginger, and garlic. And once I've heated this up to bring it all together, I'll drop that in and that'll be our sauce ready. So I'm literally just gonna give that a little stir, pop it on the stove, bring it to the simmer, take it off again. That's it, job done. Our little cheaty soy sin sauce, ready to rock. So my bao, they've puffed up a bit. Bit of that sesame and vegetable oil, just three fingers, gently push down on the dough so that you spread it out a little bit. Don't be too afraid to be, you know, vaguely forceful with it at this point because it's gonna puff right up again, don't you worry. Um, but where it's nice and oily now, pick it up, put it onto a piece of pre-oiled baking parchment and fold it over so it's almost, but not quite, folded in half. And then we can set that to one side uh, for its very final proof before it goes in the steamer. I'll show you three more times. Bum, 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 bum. 
I love these. They're so quick to make, so easy, and yet so special. You know, the, the way the texture of them is so soft and steamy. It's just a really nice thing to make. So for the cold smoked pheasant breasts, which have, you know, they've not been smoked cold all the way through. They only had a shorter period of time in the smoker. So we've got a nice exterior smoke on them. I'm gonna cut them at a little angle with a sharp knife, and try and take some nice slices off like that so that I can have nice thin bits. These I'm then gonna basically dip in a very light batter made of corn flour and egg white whipped together or whisked together, stirred together, and I'm just gonna fry those. Now you could shallow fry them, um, but here at Tim's Wild Kitchen, you know, when we've been off for a long walk to go and get these pheasants in the first place, we feel like we've burnt off enough calories to get away with a little bit of deep frying. Um, so we might try and, uh, and deep fry them so they'll be super crispy. And just because we're sticking these into bao buns doesn't mean that that's what you'd have to do with them if, you know, at home you could then you know, chuck them through a stir fry or, you know, just gobble them straight out of the pan. Obviously leave them to go cool long enough that you don't burn your fingers or your mouth. So I'm just gonna make up this quick batter now. I'm just gonna put an egg white in here. You can obviously keep the egg yolk and use it for something else. They freeze very well like the whites, so you can always save them and use them for your next hollandaise sauce or mayonnaise or something. Um, so egg white, just break it up a little bit with a whisk. And then a little bit of corn flour. Actually, this is a mixture of corn flour and tapioca flour, but you don't need to worry about that too much. I'm just gonna whisk that together until it looks like a sort of loose white paste. I'm not gonna worry about salt because we've got the lovely soy sin sauce. It's gonna help us out. And then I'm just gonna get my little bits of pheasant meat and drop them into that little batter, okay? This is all very exciting. Well, I mean, I don't get out much. It's quite exciting for me. Um, we'll just move that round in there, leave that just for a minute, and that'll be ready. Now, it's not gonna be completely coated in batter. This is not a sort of, you know, this is not the same as dipping something in a beer batter, okay? It's not gonna have like a huge layer of batter on the outside. This is a sort of lighter, crispier thing. So I've got my bamboo steamer on the go here, and you've gotta be quite quick. I don't want, you know, I wanna build up a good head of steam, so I'm gonna take off that layer pop my first bow in there, make sure the paper's tucked down so that it doesn't all end up on top. Pick up the steamer, take the lid off, put the next one in. Now, if you haven't got a little bamboo steamer like this, don't worry, you know, um, you could rig something up, I don't know, with an old one of those and a saucepan lid or something, you know, you could steam them that way. Um, but we want a good head of steam in there, and I know from past experience that this side of the arga will take a little while to keep that steaming nicely. So I'm just gonna cheat, pop it over on the gas while they get steamed. So hopefully in here, my bow is done. Look at that, puffed up like a beauty, nice and firm. That means it's steamed nicely. I'm just gonna use the paper to lift it out. I made them quite big so that this is kind of like a chunky portion. Don't, whatever you do, think, oh, I'm not quite ready. I'll leave them in the steamer and switch it off. Because if you do that, you'll end up with disintegrated um, bow. Get the next purple in. It won't take very long to cook in there. That oil's hot, it's about 180 Celsius. If you're nervous about deep frying, you could do this in a sort of shallower oil in a pan, frying pan. Some of these are ready, so we just take them out, drain them on a nice bit of kitchen roll so that they don't go soggy and oily. This is super thin bits of smoky pheasant breast there. Make sure you don't cook them for too long. This is not a long deep frying scenario. It's very thin slivers of meat. They're gonna cook very, very quickly. We don't wanna dry it out and make it too tough. So I've got everything together. I've got my freshly steamed bowels. I've got my fried, lightly smoked cock pheasant breasts. I've got my cheaty little soy sin sauce. I'm just gonna do a little bit of chopped spring onion for a garnish. You could chop some toasted, uh, not chop, you could toast a few sesame seeds, sprinkle them on there as well. And if you like it spicy, you could add a bit more 
chili. There's a little bit in the seven spice, but if you wanted to add a bit more, that wouldn't be the end of the world either. Um, this is some, um, this is naughty food really. This is not the sort of thing you could eat every day. This is not Dan the cameraman style, extra press ups, Iron Man action. This is greedy, naughty, oh my goodness, gobble it down, pretend it wasn't you, clear it away quick. Um, <clears throat> so we'll pick a nice steamy bowl. We break it open where it's oiled, so it's nice, gives us that nice little hole in the middle. Uh, a few little spring onions, just as a nod towards a healthy diet. A couple of nice bits of our lightly smoked, walked up cock pheasant breast from the frying batter, and then a good drizzle, not too much, a good drizzle of this sticky, salty, spicy, I mean, we're gonna make another one for the photo, I'm gonna eat that. Uh, and what you've gotta do is you've just gotta get it, you've just gotta pick it up, and you've just gotta This is quite exciting. Um, <clears throat> little cocktail. Uh, the lovely, lovely people at the Borders Distillery sent me, way back in the early spring, some of their Puffing Billy, uh, Puffing, Puffing, Puffing Billy? I haven't been drinking it yet, I promise. Puffing Billy steam vodka, okay? Now, this is a vodka that they make using new make spirit from malt uh, barley. So it's, basically it's an unaged whiskey. Now this clearly does not look unaged. That's because back in the spring, I got a trusty book written by my brilliant friend and I learned all about uh, a bitters uh, from Iceland called Bjork. And that is vodka that you pour over a whole load of birch twigs. See those in there? So I marinated them in there for about nine, 10 months. And that ends up is this stuff, which is kind of like a cheaty whiskey really, because whiskey is just new make spirit that's aged with wood. But this has got a real sort of sweet pungency to it and you get the bitterness from the bark, okay? At the same time as doing that, or shortly afterwards, I then tapped the same birch trees and made myself some birch syrup by reducing down the birch water coming out of the trees. So that made me then think, well, hang on, I know it was vodka to start with, but it's now technically a whiskey because it's been aged with wood. So why don't we make an old fashioned, and rather than using sugar, we'll sweeten it with the birch sap. So if this isn't a, a cocktail worthy of Tim's wild kitchen, I can't think of one that is. And of course, normally with an old fashioned, you do whiskey and you put a bit of Angostura bitters in there. We won't need the bitters because the bitterness will come from the birch bark. So here we go, live experiment. We're gonna chill that glass down there uh, with our nice ice cube so that the glass is nice and cold. And then in a icy jug here, we're going to make our drink. Now, um, <clears throat> I don't wanna be too devil may care about the quantities, so I'm gonna use a little measure and I'm gonna go for roughly half a stirrup cup of, or two thirds of a stirrup cup of Björk, as it's called. It's amazing stuff, by the way. The scent of it's incredible. And then, because birch syrup, even when it's reduced down like this, isn't that sweet, I'm gonna go for near even quantities, maybe just slightly less birch syrup. Obviously, if I've got birch syrup, you could use um, maple syrup, or you could make a little sugar syrup to sweeten it up a bit, but don't use this much, because it'll be sweeter. I'll pop that in there. I cannot, for the life of me, find any good reason why I shouldn't put a little bit of orange zest in there uh, to really underline the idea of the old fashioned. So I'm gonna put a little bit in there, a little bit in my glass as well. Before I put that in my serving glass, I'm gonna break the skin over the serving glass. And whilst you can't see it, that's releasing lots of orange oil into the glass. That goes in there. I'm gonna stir together my Björk, or Björk, is it Björk? Björk, it's nice and quiet. I'm gonna stir it round, stir it round, and then, when I think it's nice and cold, give it a little bit longer. It's oh so still. I don't think I'd have cut it as a pop star, to be honest. Anyway, never mind. Um, nice and cold, nice and cold. And then I'm just gonna pour it over my chilled glass with that big chunk of ice in it. And that is the old fashioned of dreams. All right, it takes nine months to make, but you know, you can't rush everything, can you? That is seriously different. Very, very nice. Well worth a go.